to accept that not all countries have the same vision. And he went on to say, if the countries such as Britain do not want to move to the next stage, we should be prepared to agree with them a special status that would preserve close ties, but avoid them acting as a break on the progress of others. Here, here, she's got some to go. That think tank global vision with the Daily Telegraph is thinking through what would be a new Rouge doctrine, setting out the shape of the treaty between a fully independent United Kingdom within a single market, but over which the European Court would have no jurisdiction nor the Commission any power. Even more important, since Giscard made his comments, the world financial crisis has exposed a dangerous fault in European monetary union. <coughs> when the chips went down, the EMU states acted, each in its own national interest, regardless of their mutual obligations. In short, the euro was exposed as a single currency with 15 chancellors of the exchequer <laughs> and 15 treasuries. As I explained to Ken Clark many years ago, <laughs> in the long run, there can be only one chancellor, one treasurer, one tax system, one economic policy for any one currency. And that means one government and one state. I doubt if all the EU members will be willing and able to make that step to have their 1707 moment to create a union like that of the United Kingdom. So if you put those two things together, Giscard's words and the crisis in EU, we can see the possibility of a new European community of sovereign, independent states that cooperate with and need to go. Most of us would be the existing nation states, but one would be the European Republic. And it's time that the Conservative Party, alongside the Eurosceptics, alongside the better off houses, alongside you, if I may say so, Mr. <laughs> began to think about the architecture of such a Bruges style Europe. To what extent would we be willing to find ourselves to agree and implement policies with our fellow Europeans and in which areas? The new nationalism of Russia makes necessary not only the continuing strength of NATO, but some political common purpose in Europe. So do the long term problems of energy, of pollution, of the migration of people, the free movement of capital and of goods across borders. Something better and different than today's European Union is needed. We can conceive of something of the ever closer union of the six founding states that was envisaged half a century ago. Combined with something more like you, Lady Thatcher, envisaged 20 years ago, a truly European compromise. There is much to play for. I hope now that the Conservative Party will set out a negotiating brief, that the next Conservative government will take to Brussels early in its first term, and that it would within two years of the next election, 
present to the British people the outcome of those negotiations. I think that framework should be a framework of the West European Republic and of the rest of us, the sovereign European states. And we would have a relationship to deal with our common problems, but we would not be governed by each other. And then in a referendum, the British people should be asked to decide whether to accept a new structure, whatever it was, or perhaps that there was no such deal on offer. And in that case, the British people would decide whether to accept what was there or simply to leave the Union. We can't drift on as we have been drifting these last 20, 30 years towards a European state which would not work and which could not conceivably be in the British interest. It isn't fair to the British people. It is not fair to the other peoples of Europe. It's not fair to the European Union. We need now to show some Thatcherite courage, some determination to lead this country along a path which is not only in our interest, but is in the interest of all the peoples of Europe. It's not just for Britain. It is for Europe, because our destinies are indeed linked, that we need to get rid of this absurd idea that there can be a Western European state of 27 nations get back to the reality of the friendship and the relationship that there should be between the nations of Western Europe. That is our ambition.